It's been a long time and it seems that everything is coming full circle. The planets are properly aligned again and the universe finally conspires to give us what we want for so long. And we want a proper Tomb Raider. Yeah, you can keep this new stuff to yourself. Give us the real deal. Give us the core design philosophy again. And a few months ago, the bomb dropped in the vein of news of a new Tomb Raider being in the works. Well, to be honest, it's a lie. We are not getting anything new, but the old stuff wrapped up in a new shiny cellophane. I guess there is no other choice but to take it, and we are so gonna take it. If you are familiar with the remasters like Crash Bandicoot Ensign Trilogy or Spyro Reignited Trilogy, then you perfectly know what to expect from the Tomb Raider 1 to 3 remastered. It's pretty much the same deal. In essence, you get the first three sequels from the late 19th era enhanced with the newer visuals while retaining the gameplay and sound aspect intact. But this Tomb Raider trilogy actually offers more than just beefing up the visuals. More bang for buck. Since I've somewhat dissected the games themselves in each video several months ago, in this one I'm only gonna focus on what is new in these remasters and what are my overall thoughts about it. Seems reasonable, right? Ok, let's dive in. Almost immediately when you start the game, you'll be greeted with the familiar sight. A main menu for the original Tomb Raider with the famous background music that will make you shed a tear or two, if you're sentimental. Especially when you see how pretty and how smooth it looks right now. Even Lara is slightly redesigned since that's how she looks in the game. I have to say, that appearance suits her well. They've totally nailed her... appearance. And of course, by going up and down you're able to choose between the sequels which is nice and you can choose to start the main game or start the expansion. Oh dearie me, we have expansions? That's completely right my friends, something that could have been easily sold as a DLC these days is included in the game right from the start. I mean, these were sold as an expansions on the PC platform back in the day but still, it's nice to have an all included. That means that we have a total of 15 additional levels combined across all 3 expansions which is a lot. A lot if you remember that Tomb Raider 1 itself has a total of 15 levels if you exclude Croft Manor, right? The main and the biggest change in this trilogy are the visuals. Gone is the endless display of eyesore blocky pixelated textures in favor of something more pleasing to look at. This means that 99% of the time I would be playing the levels just to see how my favorite ones look after a decent amount of facelifting. And I must admit, the result is awesome. But if you expect something current gen like, well forget about it. After all, these are old games so some of the compromises needed to be made. The visuals are like interesting blend of cartoonish style and realism depending on the situation. And now, would you kindly marvel at the visuals of the levels like the Lost Valley that finally has the blue sky. Now it looks so good. Check out the tomb of Qualopec with these vibrant colors. Greece levels such as St. Francis Folly and Colosseum are also benefiting from having the sky texture up there. Now you have sun rays illuminating some of the rooms casting different light than you might be used to in the old times. No more baked light, so that means that some of the rooms will be darker than usual and some will be much brighter, but it looks realistic. Egypt levels with their crisp colors and sharp hieroglyphs, they look like a real deal. Tomb Raider The Last Revelation now wishes it can look like this. Atlantis and its great pyramid with these pulsating hallways remind me of a censored cover of Carcass's album Symphonies of Sickness. Or it feels like you are walking inside some big alien digestive system. Gross. What about Tomb Raider 2 with Venice and Bartoli's hideout? You can almost feel that you are visiting Italy where the combination of orange, yellow, grey, brown and greenish colors resides. To contrast all of that, there's the obligatory visit to the wreck of Maria Doria and the deck with the shades of blue. In the end, I had to see what the Barkang monastery looked like, especially this big Buddha statue and the Temple of Xi'an due to the sheer amount of dungeons it has. And let me tell you, it looks incredible. And let's not forget the floating islands, slimy green with the occasional sakura tree and the greenish castle full of better looking fires. I'm actually quite impressed how it all looks so good with a little graphic tweak. Check out the foliage in the jungle of Tomb Raider 3. Now it really feels like a proper jungle. You can even see that there's additional assets like trees put here and there to increase the density. What about the coastal village and its famous shore? I simply cannot believe how good it looks now. Check it out. Doesn't it look like a real tropical paradise now, huh? The fury rivers of Maduba Gorge look way better and the color of the water looks so fresh. I mean, I can really go on and on about all of this. Aspir has done such a good job. Lara and the other human characters as well as animal models are also updated to look better. As you can see, the gun is the most famous trademark ever called the triangular tits. Lara's model looks the same in all three games and she has the ability to move the mouth and eyes while talking. Now the excessive nodding in the in-game cutscenes looks weird and unnecessary, right? 
Just check this out. It looks kind of stupid. The joints are connected properly so there's no clipping involved between the limbs. The only clipping that is still happening is arms and legs coming through the walls in certain environments. The engine itself appears to be modified to embed the level editor and the source code appears to be the same gameplay wise. As you can see, gameplay mechanics are the same. The design of the terrain is identical to the originals and so forth. If you're familiar with the originals, you'll be right at home. Everything is exactly the same, but if for some unknown reason you don't like the updated visuals, with a click of a button you can immediately switch to the old original visuals. How awesome is that? So you can switch between styles as much as you like, but the only downside is the frame rate. Playing the old way cannot give you more than 30 FPS, while playing the new way gives you a smooth 60 FPS. Since I've played all of these games in the last couple of months, I know what I would prefer. Nice silky smoothness, of course. What about the controls? Well, they are pretty much intact, so if you know how to deal with the tank controls, playing these remasters will feel like a nice nostalgic trip down the memory lane. I think the only tweak that I've noticed in Tomb Raider 1 is the ability to do a roll while jumping. That move was initially available from Tomb Raider 2 onwards, if I remember correctly. The further proof that the gameplay is the same is the ability for example to do a corner glitch. You just stand there on the corner like so, and through some jumping, you might end up on the edge if the platform exists up there. That's actually how you can cheat your way into climbing up some pillars that you are not yet supposed to tackle, or you can end up on the roof of your mansion. But would you look at that, there's no static water texture up there anymore. See? Too bad. But anyways, yeah, you can climb onto your roof and end up on the quad bike racetrack without using the key to open the door. However, I've noticed two things when it comes to the interaction with the objects. I think that developers in Aspir tweaked the animation a bit so Lara can precisely position herself by walking in front of the item she is about to pick. While she is crawling in Tomb Raider 3 and trying to grab an item, she no longer goes into a crouching position to grab the item, only to draw weapons. She grabs the item while being on her knees which is faster, and that's good if you ask me. The same goes with the interaction with the buttons and levers. She will no longer abruptly snap herself in front of the object, but she will walk towards it. And that is the unintentional fix of a bug that I can no longer perform. Can you spot this button that is covered in the cover in the Area 51 for launching the rocket? In the originals, it was possible to roll underneath, turn around and Lara would press it. Now in the remaster, she will walk to position herself. That means walking out and no longer can you press the button this way. What a shame. Can't shorten the level length by at least 30% now. Oh well, never mind. Can you notice the exclamation mark while approaching the items and interactive objects? This helps in case you don't know if something is operational or not. Uh -huh. This now is a dead giveaway. Or maybe you don't see an item very well and you run over it. No problemo. The exclamation mark will pop and warn you that there is something there on the floor. And you can pick it up. I was also wondering if you can use the same cheats in the game. Turns out you can. I guess we can blame the usage of the same source code. For Tomb Raider 3, you can input PS1 cheat codes or PC ones and they both work. I'm using the PC version so I can confirm that. And of course you can detonate Lara in Tomb Raider 2 by pressing the wrong code intentionally. It would be cool if developers would take a piece and create the code for the infamous Nude Raider. At least censored version so we can finally come full circle in this department. In order to try to please the modern gameplay demographic, there is yet another new feature you can use. That's right, you can use the modern controls for the first time ever in these games. These new controls resemble the ones used in Tube Raider Legend or Anniversary. Maybe this is just me, but I feel sort of awkward. Fighting multiple enemies should be easier, but performing... Hmm, I'm not really sure. Because these levels were designed ground up for the tank controls, so... But maybe this is just me and my inability to adapt to them since I'm conditioned to the old controls for decades. I don't know. You can test them for yourself and see how you feel using them. There is also the photo mode that can be engaged anywhere in the game. As far as I can see, it offers multiple poses, wardrobe and facial expressions of Lara and you can move the camera around and that's it. Too bad it does not offer some effects or the ability to move Lara around. Nevertheless, I was able to snap some cool photos so I guess that's alright. If you do the traditional geezer in the freezer ordeal, poor Winston will actually get frozen for a brief moment which is a nice touch. A nice celebration of something all of us did back then when we were playing the games and now you get the achievement for that. That's right, there's tons of achievements to get, from typical ones such as collecting something to turning Lara into the golden statue by touching the Midas stone hand. Very cool. Let me tell you some good news. You can save anywhere, anytime in all three games. 
you will notice that the first game doesn't have the crystals and the third game has them only as a collectibles. This makes the playthrough so much easier. So, good riddance to you pesky blue shiny bastards. But actually, that's not entirely true. See, when you finish the games, you have the new game plus mode and guess what happens there? Yep, those goddamn crystals are making a return, in case you missed them for some reason. Wanna play the Tomb Raider 3 PS1 way? Sure thing, beat the game once and go for the new game plus. Let's say that this is the sneaky way to insert the nightmare mode in the game, only for the hardcore players. Is there anything that I don't like in these remasters? Well, there's not much to be frank. Okay, FMV animations could have been better. They're upscaled and all that, but the letters in some of them are looking rubbish. They're begging for some reworking and maybe changing Lara's appearance to suit her look in the games now. I mean, it's not something that is necessary, but it would be a nice touch. And maybe, but this one's on me, it would be cool to have the additional box when you load or save the game. Because sometimes I would enter the passport and click the load game while I wanted to save the game and vice versa. Naturally, I'd be quite cross by that. Because load and save game looks almost identical in the passport menu if you're doing it quickly. Once again, that's not something that would kill me if it doesn't exist, but it would help prevent me from doing a mistake every once in a while. But besides all that, I'm pretty sure it will sell like hot cupcakes. And judging by all of the people playing the games already, I'm expecting at least a million copies sold. At least. Enough to convince Aspir to remaster The Last Revelation and Chronicles. But maybe they are already working on it. And this is the spoiler by the way. There's this radar screen whose coordinates point to Giza. And we all know that the number of levels set in Tomb Raider The Last Revelation are set in Giza. And you can also see the word next. So what do you think? Is this already a hint that the TLR remaster is in the works? Well, I think this is it for now from me. Overall, Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remaster is a tremendous example of a job done right. Asper did exactly what I hoped they would do while remastering the games. And that is, make them pretty while retaining the mechanics. Everything else, such as expansions, modern controls, achievements, is just the icing on the delicious cake. For those who played the originals, this video is pretty much unnecessary. You're already playing the games, I know. But for those new and unsure whether they should play the games or not, give it a shot and see for yourselves what exactly do we veterans see in these games. Maybe you'll fall for them too. After all, this remaster is not even expensive for the value it brings back. So, what's stopping you? Go ahead, play it. And you know what? Thank you very much for watching this video. It means a lot to me. You can also smash that like button if you like it and sub for the content in the similar fashion and until next time, kanpai!